What's up everybody, Jared here with carbuzz.com and if you can believe it, Chevy has now been making the mid-engined eighth generation Corvette for four model years. This is a 2023 Corvette Stingray convertible and this celebrates the 70th year of Corvette production. Well, 69th if you don't count 1983 because they didn't make a Corvette in that model year. So we have a few changes for the 2023 model year that we are gonna go over. But again, the Corvette package, the C8 package, hasn't really changed all that much. It is a fantastic car and we're going to talk about it now. So we don't see too many changes here on the outside. This color is called Ceramic Matrix Gray and it has quickly become one of my favorite Corvette colors. It sort of looks white in most lights, but it has like a blue tint to it that is really unique. It is a subtle, but very beautiful color that I think works really well on the Stingray because it has such outrageous styling anyway. Uh, that you don't really need such an obnoxious color. We've got the Z51 package. So we've got like this uh, like splitter down here as well. We have like a few other exterior details as well. I'll talk a little bit more about what performance upgrades the Z51 package gets you when we get this car out on the road. This is a new wheel design for the 2023 model year. And honestly, I think that this is the best wheel that you can get on the C8 Corvette at this point. You can get it in this kind of two-tone color where you have like a silver finish and then like a dark gray. This is a forged wheel as well. You can also get this with like a red lip if you get what's something called a 70th anniversary package or you can get this in like a darker black. Since we have the Z51 package, we have this nice red brake caliper behind it. It is a Brembo four piston caliper, but you can also get that in other colors as well. We've got 19 inch wheels up front and 20s in the back, staggered. Um, I believe they're 220 or 245 section tires up front, 305s in the rear Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Now, I really like how this ceramic matrix gray pairs with the hard top here, which is finished in black. That is really cool. I like the uh, contrasting roof option there. It looks really cool with these like black, uh, like uh, scoops around the air intakes there, which is really cool. You have these cool uh, buttresses as well. You have that like window that slides down as well. Unfortunately on the convertible Corvette, you cannot see the engine. Uh, you get a glass hatch on the coupe that lifts up and you can see the engine. You cannot on the convertible. Now back here on this little window, if I can get a close up of that, you have a special detail denoting that this is a 70th year car Corvette 70, 1953 to 2023, which is quite cool. That is a nice little touch that all 2023 model year Corvettes have. Now you can put the roof down very quickly from the inside or you can do it here on the key fob. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like from the key fob, just so we can see what it looks like from the outside. I believe you have to unlock the car first. Now let's try holding that button down. There we go. So that is going to lift up. The top is really just two pieces. You're gonna see it fold. Those little nubby things are gonna come up and then the whole thing's gonna close. Pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty painless. You can do it right from the key, although I don't think it goes up from the key. I believe it only goes down. So you will have to get back in it if it starts raining to put the roof down. So now we can see these uh, buttresses. They look really cool. That rear window slides down, but not quite all the way. It does stick out just a little bit, but this gives you a little bit more of an open cabin than you would get in the coupe. It's not as big as of a difference as it used to be on the C7 generation, but on the C8, this only adds like 170 pounds to the overall weight. So it has zero zero uh, effect on the performance. Chevy still quotes the exact same zero to 60 times, top speeds, etc. cetera. Uh, so there's really no disadvantage to getting the coupe uh, or getting the convertible other than it costs more. It's $7,500 for that versus uh, getting the uh, coupe and you can't see the engine as I said. So if it's worth the convenience to you to be able to put it down at the press of a button, because on the coupe, you have three latches to undo. You have to physically get out and physically stick it in the trunk, and then it takes up your trunk. So if that's worth $7,500 to you, I recommend getting it. If it's not, then obviously don't get it. Now back here, we have the Stingray logo up there. Again, this car looks so cool. 
there are a couple of like weird dimensions. Like this back is a little long for my taste. They had to make it long so that they could, um, you know, put a big, big enough trunk back there. But honestly, I don't want to nitpick this design too much because people have been giving me stares in this car all week. And honestly, most people who don't know that much about cars think it's a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. So I want to just give Chevy all of the credit here for making a car that looks this cool. Now I mentioned they did put a trunk back here. It's a pretty sizable one, but it's a weird shape. It is very wide and very long in this direction, but very narrow and very short this direction. So you can get golf clubs in here, but you can't get like a pizza box, which is very square. Uh, so keep that in mind when you are shopping for this car um, that this trunk is maybe not uh, the most usable for your purposes. Soft bags only, you probably won't get a lot of hard suitcases in here. We do have a soft close, just bring it to a close and it's gonna do the rest, which is quite cool. We also have a trunk up here because the engine is in the middle. So obviously there's nothing up here up front. Let's see, I need to double click that, there we go. And that'll open. So we have our trunk. This one is not nearly as large, but it is quite deep. You can see it goes down in there quite well. These are um, air duct coolers for the brakes that uh, I guess were uninstalled for some reason. You do still have your little child safety button to get out of there if you do somehow manage to stuff somebody in there, which I don't really think would be possible. You have access to your windshield wiper fluid as well. To close this one, it does not have a soft close. You just kind of, you know, push it down with your hand. Now we're gonna check out the interior because this is new for 2023. Chevy sent me a three LT car. So this car comes in three trim levels, not counting the Z06, that's like a completely different thing. One LT, two LT, and three LT. So the three LT is fully loaded. It's got the nicest interior possible. And this is a new color option for 2023. Look at all the red. Literally almost everything in here is red. The dashboard is red. The door cards are red. The only thing that really isn't red is that steering wheel and like a few buttons. It might be a little bit too much red for some people, but honestly, I think with the ceramic matrix white or gray, which is like a very subtle color mixed with the red, I think it is a really darn cool color combo. Because we have the 3LT, you're gonna get the GT2 seats as standard. So these are a little more bolstered than the base Corvette seat. You also have carbon fiber here, which looks really nice. We have our Chevy Corvette logo here as well. This is, I, I think, the perfect seat. They do a competition seat that's even a little more aggressive than this, but I don't think you need it. I think this is pretty much the right level. Look, even the carpeting is red. It's so crazy here. We've got red seat belts as well. I love how Chevy has all these different seat belt colors. You can get yellow, blue, black if you're just feeling boring. Um, but yeah, you can basically get the seat belt in a bunch of different colors as well. Because we have that 3LT package, everything is leather. This is all leather. Down here, this lower part is all leather as well, so you gotta watch, uh, you'll scuff it when you get out of it. We've got our little button to get out here as we've had in Corvettes for a while now. They did put an emergency uh, latch right here if the battery dies. We've got our nice Bose uh, Performance Series audio. This sounds really good as well, and I love this nice metal as well. It looks really good with the red, um, and of course it feels really premium as well. Now let's go ahead and step on in. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. We've got this nice aluminum version of GM's typical starter button. Ooh, I love that growl. We've got our Corvette logo on the screen as we start it up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top back up because it's gonna be better for our lighting situation and I'm not going to fry. We can watch that go up from the inside. You'll see as the roof comes up that we have this beautiful red suede on the inside. So the last time I drove a 3LT package car, it was a coupe. Um, so you had like some stitching on here with like this intricate pattern. You don't get that on the coupe, but honestly, I think that this nice suede lining on the convertible feels really premium. I absolutely love that, honestly. So we have this weird uh, steering wheel here. It's sort of square. It's kind of weird. You can kind of grip it up here or you can grip it down here where the paddle shifters are. They are big, nice paddle shifters as well. I'm totally used to the steering wheel. I know some people really don't like it, but I think it is um, pretty darn nice to be honest. Um, 
We have our digital gauge cluster there, which we can change a little bit. I'll show you that in just another minute. Here in the steering wheel, we have the Z button, which you click it and the little Z lights up. That's like a custom mode. So you have a my mode and you have a Z mode. So you basically get two different customizable modes here. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. But I first wanna just talk about all of the luxury features we have here on the 3LT. We've got the big row of buttons, which I know some people either love or hate. I'm used to it. I think it's very easy to find all of the things you're looking for. We've got heated and ventilated seats, which is a nice feature on a sports car. It's a little annoying when you're sitting as a passenger because this kind of makes you feel separated from the driver, but doesn't bother me because I'm the driver. We've got a nice, uh, I believe nine inch touch screen here, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. We also have a nice front view camera so you don't have to worry about scraping your fancy Corvette. We also have a optional nose lift feature. So you go ahead and push this button. And then a really cool feature is when you push that button, it's gonna ask you if you want the car to learn the, the location. So perhaps you have a driveway that's too steep for the car, you push that button and it will remember every time you pull up to that driveway to do the nose lift, which is really darn cool. I love that feature. We also have a rear view camera mirror up here. So this is kind of cool. You can see the, um, the Corvette uh, logo over there, that 70th anniversary. And because it's backwards in the mirror, you're going to be able to read it properly, which is a nice touch. Or you can flip this and now you have the camera view mirror. Unfortunately, this does not work when the top is lowered and that's because the camera sits on the roof. So I mentioned you can change this uh, screen here. You do that with this drive mode selector. It's in a little bit of an awkward position if you're um, here with a, with a big cup, but it is nice knurled uh, metal, which is quite nice. So right now we're in tour mode, which is basically your comfort mode. When you go ahead and put it in sport mode, the gauge is going to go red. Your information is going to change a little bit. And then if I move over once more to the right, that's going to put us in track mode. Now we have our full loud exhaust. We have here, here's basically everything that's changing there, steering, engine sound, suspension, engine shift, brake feel. And we have a tachometer that is more pronounced, um, which is quite cool. It's very easy to visualize. So if you are tracking the car, that is pretty perfect. Um, you also have your my mode, as I mentioned, or if I push the Z button, then it's going to go into like the sport gauge button. This is how I like to set up Z, pretty much sporty on everything, but I like to keep the suspension soft because it does get a little bit bumpy uh, when you're in, uh, when you're in that, uh, that track mode. Um, other things that I can talk about, storage in here, not bad. Again, two cup holders, not too bad. We've got little door pockets that are actually quite sizable. We have a decent sized glove box as well. And I definitely wanted to mention this wireless charger. We've got our Bose speaker here above it. There again, we have the 70th anniversary, 1953 to 2023 written on there. That's the other spot where we get a special 70th anniversary touch. And then we have our wireless charger right here. This does a great job because it hugs the phone in really well. It's not in a place where you can take it out constantly and be distracted by it. And it charges the phone like really fast, like way faster than I'm used to from a lot, of, a lot of wireless chargers. So I definitely wanted to mention that to you before we get this car out on the road. And I should mention, um, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and do that when we talk about pricing. I've, I've already taken enough of your time talking about the interior. So let's get this Corvette out on the road because that's where it belongs. All right, now with the Z06 incoming for the 2023 model year, I am so happy that I have one last chance to get behind the wheel of a 2023 Corvette Stingray so that I can really just remember and appreciate what a perfect sports car General Motors has put together here under the Corvette nameplate. We've got a 6.2 liter V8 engine, their LT2 V8 engine behind my head. We have the Z51 package, which is going to pull up the horsepower and torque we now have 495 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. It's five lower in each category. If you don't get the Z51 package, you want the Z51 package. Zero to 60, Chevy says 2.9 seconds, which I have not been able to replicate a 2.9 second run, but with zero planning, just like middle of the road, just launch control, just see what I can get. I've been able to get about 3.3, 3.4 seconds, which is still blisteringly 
quick. It's about three seconds without the Z51 package, but again, I think those acceleration numbers are a little optimistic. Through the quarter mile, you're gonna be doing 11.2 seconds. This is such a powerful car. So at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not you really need to wait for that Z06 model. Top speed is 184 miles an hour with the Z51 package. It's actually a little bit higher without it, 194 miles an hour. That's because of the wing in the back. It's gonna give you more downforce at the cost of top speed. Chevy knows that you can't really have both. We've got this eight speed dual clutch transmission that is absolutely phenomenal. It is such a great uh, eight speed dual clutch. I'm gonna show you what it works like in a launch control situation before I talk to you about what's in that Z51 package. So foot on the brake, foot on the gas, let's go. Launch. Ooh. Oh my God. That was zero to 60 in about 3.3. Oh. That is a really quick launch, oh my God. Zero drama, the car is able to get itself off the line, no troubles whatsoever. Um, I'm now in the race mode, so the magnetic suspension, which is optional, is in its firmest setting and you can totally feel a difference. This is a very, very comfortable car. I mean, it's still a sports car, it's still very tightly sprung, but when the magnetic uh, dampers are set to their softest settings, this is actually a pretty livable car. When you have it in race mode, like I have it right now, or track mode, yeah, it, it gets a lot firmer. So I think I should talk about what's in that Z51 package. So. As I mentioned, magnetic ride control is optional on top of Z51 package. You can get it with or without. I absolutely would get it because I love the flexibility it gives you in the ride comfort. You can either make this really comfortable or really firm at the press of a button. You get a limited slip differential, you get a performance rear axle ratio, you get Brembo four piston brakes, uh, which are really great. You get the performance exhaust, which sounds great. You get a spoiler in the back. You can also get a larger spoiler. You get additional cooling, which is great if you're going to be tracking your Corvette. And you get better tire, tires, Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss, which are really good tires. That Z51 package, it's about $6,300. Absolutely, it's worth uh, the price of entry. If, if you want the best Corvette, you're gonna want that Z51 package. All right, we're gonna pull over one more time before we try one more launch control here because I think I can do even a little better on the zero to 60 here. All right, we're gonna let that car in front of me get a little bit ahead. Actually, they're pulling over, so I have plenty of room. I gotta reset the timer. All right, ready? Sixty. Three point four seconds, so yeah easily repeatable no drama off the line i think if you had like a prepped surface you know like a drag strip or something like that you could maybe get a little closer to chevy's 2.9 second claim i've never done it but again easily repeatable no problems whatsoever this dual clutch transmission i have it in auto mode right now but if you go ahead and put it in manual mode it's just immediate engine sounds great back there i'm loving the sound of that engine there's a really cool feature um, just like porsche's pdk where if you pull both paddles you can just give it some revs which is really cool you could do a clutch kick like that just a really fun uh, feature i like to call that uh pull into cars and coffee mode you know you pull into cars and coffee pull both paddles <laughs> give people a little rev ski really fun so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it out of tour mode i'm going to drop the roof because this is convertible we gotta we gotta drop the roof which can be done on the move at speeds of i believe up to about 31 miles an hour it's pretty quick let's see i'll let you know when it's done i'm doing it as i u-turn there we go top complete so that wasn't too long at all we've got the open top feel if i go ahead and roll up both windows and then I roll up that little back window back there. It creates a pretty uh, pretty lax cabin. Like it's not too windy in here when you have all of those windows up. And again, I just love the convertible top because now I have this fresh air. You know, I can do it at a moment's notice. I don't need to undo all the latches, 
physically get out of the car, put the trunk in, and then I live in Florida, so uh-oh, clouds are coming, and I can just push a button and I can get the roof back. Not everybody is going to wanna spend $7,500 on that, but I think I personally would. And when you're just cruising around in this car, it's a gentle, docile, daily driver almost. The dual clutch is smooth. The steering is fantastic, but it's not like too sharp that it's like distracting on the highway. I mentioned that the magnetic ride control is absolutely astonishing. And you could almost get pretty good fuel economy too if you really, really try. Uh, Chevy rates this at 16 MPG city, not great. 24 on the highway, not terrible. 19 combined. If you really hyper mile it, because it can shut down and become a four cylinder, a V4, uh, when you're not really on it, you can get some decent fuel economy. I think that the old C7 was a little bit better at that. It had that uh, cruiser gear on the seven speed manual transmission that could get really good fuel economy. You could get almost like 30. So this isn't quite as good in that category. But other than that, I really can't see a lot of areas where you would want to improve this C8. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my Z mode. This is my favorite mode because now I have everything in its sharpest setting, but I have the suspension in its comfort mode. I don't love the super bumpy suspension in track mode. So this is where I can really enjoy the Corvette. Oh my God, there's just so much grip from these Michelin uh, Pilot Sport tires. It's crazy, the balance is absolutely great. The one thing I would say that you maybe might not like about the Corvette if you're coming from like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or something like that is that it only revs to like 5,500, 6,000 RPM before you have to shift up. So if you're driving it in automatic mode a lot of the time, it's just, you know, it's short shifting early. I'm really interested to see what that Z06 feels like because that's gonna have like an 8,000 RPM red line. It's gonna be a flat plane crank V8, 680 horsepower. So you're gonna get all the stuff that made this Stingray model great, but with more power, a higher revving engine, it's not gonna sound just like a regular, you know, Chevy V8. It's going to sound completely different. So do I think you need the Z06? Absolutely not. I think that this Corvette package, this, this Z51 package Stingray, as it sits, is already incredible. We're gonna do one more zero to 60. Wow, that one was a little slower, but that still felt incredible to me. Oh my God. You know, I can't wait to see the zero six, but if you're just looking for all the sports car you really need in life, I don't think you need much more than this Stingray. This might be the perfect sports car. Bravo, Chevy. All right, so that was the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Convertible. How much is this magnificent sports car going to cost you? Well, the base price for 2023, it keeps going up each year is now just over $73,000. That's $7,500 more than the coupe and $1,050 more than last year's model. As I mentioned, if you want the convenience of the convertible, I think that is absolutely worth it. And the Corvette was already a screaming deal. So for $1,000 more, it doesn't really put me off on wanting one of these cars. Now, if you want a 3LT trim like we have that gets you all of that leather on the inside, that's eight. $84,545. That does not include things like the Z51 package for $6,345, the front axle lift for $2,200, these 20 inch forged wheels for about $2,000, the magnetic ride for about $1,900, the carbon colored roof, that's about $1,300, red brake calipers up front, that's another $600. As tested, you're not gonna believe it. This 23 Corvette is $95,450 with destination. So that is really encroaching on Z06 territory. So for 2023, the Corvette Z06 is gonna start at $106,000. That is for a base 
coupe. The 3LT coupe is 120 grand. Again, just like the Stingray, it's gonna be $7,500 extra if you want the convertible. So you can get a Corvette Z06 up to almost 130 grand. So I know that $95,000 sounds like a ton of money to spend on what is basically the base Corvette, but that Z06 is quite expensive and I don't think you're really gonna be able to use that performance out on the road. This is plenty for most people. I also wanna mention for, for 2023, there is a new 70th anniversary edition package. It's six grand. It's gonna come in this white pearl metallic tri-coat color with the carbon flash roof. You're gonna get basically this same wheel with like a red lip. You're gonna get a special matched luggage that fits perfectly in the trunk and you're gonna get a unique two-tone interior with a few uh, 70th uh, birthday packages, but you get that on the regular Corvette as well. Honestly, I'd skip that. For, for $6,000, I'd much rather just get a regular Corvette and get the Z51 package. Skip the 70th anniversary package. If you can find one of these at sticker price, this is still an absolute bargain. Those Z06s are gonna be coming with huge dealer markups. So I know it says it starts at 106. You might be paying 200 grand for one of those early. So if the Z06 is able to pull these prices down back to earth and you're able to get one of these at a reasonable price, please do, you won't be disappointed. I know the Z06 is going to be a phenomenal car, but that doesn't detract from the fact that this Stingray is possibly one of the best sports cars ever made, and it is definitely the best Corvette that I've ever driven. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.